founded on. Uh, we want to be the, the best at these three principles. So that's where the name came from. So I did, people ask me a lot of times, so it's an Italian company, which I believe most sound Italian. Now we're a Swiss company, and it, you know, now you know where the, the name will came from. Because we're a Swiss German company, and you see the different German words here, that's why like dash SR does not mean it's free return. So that first one, the LF24 MFT, that was the spring return model because there's a word fader in German which means spring. So that F in the second uh, spot in the part number, if you see an F in a Olimo actuator, that means it's a spring return actuator. The easier way that I've tried to tell people remembering that is if you see an F, think fail safe. We get a little bit away from that now that we have some electronic fail safe. But if you see an F, think fail safe, and it's a spring. H, we don't sell a lot of these. It's kind of a specialty uh, actuator. Um, the K stands for capacitor. In German, it just capacitor starts with a rather than C like we have here. <clears throat> That's our electronic failsafe. So if you see an actuator with a K, that means it's electronic failsafe rather than a spring. M stands for motor. It means it's motor driven in both directions. You're not going to have a failsafe. Here's the SR. Speeding regular means modulating. That's why dash SR means modulating. And with Belimo, our modulating is 2 to 10 volt. Uh, I know a lot of the control companies use 0 to 10 volt. Um, with our MFT actuators, you can get the Z map. It's really 0 0.5 to 10 volt because there's really nothing happening until it hits half a volt. But you can get an MFT actuator program to work nicely with the, uh, the 0 to 10 volt signal. And then you, that's another. Uh, customized or customized but more specialized actuator that actuator will go a full 360 degrees the majority of the actuators are 95 degree rotation that will go 360 so this chart is right out of the, the book there it's a nomenclature for the spring return actuator the first character there always refers to the torque rating. Uh, you can see our largest spring return is 270 inch pounds. Largest in the industry as far as uh, you know, commercial damper actuator with spring return capability. Uh, the majority of our competition are down in this 180 range, which is where we were until about a year and a half ago. Uh, then we go down to 90, then 35, then 20. One thing I was taught uh, early on in my career at Belimo as a way of remembering, you may not remember the exact torque rating, um, and we didn't have the E series at the time, but A was thought of awesome, N normal, L little, and T tiny. I guess E could be enormous because it is it's a monster size actuator. The second character, that's what's going to tell you if it's spring return model like we see here, the F, or we'll see on another slide uh, coming up in a little bit on the non-spring we'll see now. This is thrown okay, off well, a lot of... Quick question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, what I'm looking at, it's got a blank there. Where are you... Yeah. I'm in the wrong place or... Yeah, they have it right here. Oh, oh, they're they, 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 oh, they, 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 they changed it. Because you are in the spring return section, so it automatically assumes it's going to be an F. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but they used to have it like this. Said they used like to have it like that. This did come directly out of the book at one time. Apparently, for this new 2013 book, they changed it up a little bit. This column here, where you see an X right now, um, this has confused a lot of our long standing customers. Because in the past we never had anything like that. You're not going to see a whole lot that have the X. The majority are going to 
either be a B or have nothing there. Um, the L series, we've had the LF series actuators out for a long time. So with that, you'll, you won't see a, a B or an X uh, because it's what we call our old generation. And it's one of our bulletproof products, so here, there's no reason to change it right now. Um, but the B means basic. That's kind of a make to stock type product that we'll have sitting on our shelf. You know, somebody orders it, it's there to be shipped out. The X series, see up here, something is special about that. So it could be a case where you know our actuators come with standard three foot leads. Maybe you want a ten foot lead. If you do, then it would show up with an X. Uh, if you have an MFT and you wanted it programmed uh, for something other than the two to ten volt, which is our default, then it would be an X. Things like that. Then we also have a C series. That just means it's a faster running actuator. This next column here, it's the easiest one of the whole thing. 24 means you got 24 volt uh, power. 120, 120 volt, and so on. Uh, actually, the UP series is kind of a, a cool product. It's a two position only actuator, but it will work anywhere from 24 to 240 volts. No dip switches, nothing. It, you just plug it up and it works. Next column is showing the control signal. A blank, which, uh, for example, LF24. means It's just a two position actuator. Dash three means it's a floating point. Dash SR, we already talked about. That's the modulating two to 10 volt. Uh, dash PC, we're one of the few, maybe the only one that still has a phase cut replacement motor. Uh, and then various other motors, for example, the last one here, the MFT-20, that's specifically for old Barber Coleman actuators uh, because it's a six to nine volt control and it has a 20 volt built-in power supply. Another custom one is this MFT-95, it's for the old Honeywell, 0 to 135 ohm actuators. You see a dash S, means it has a built-in auxiliary switch. And then the N4 at the end, that means it's a NEMA 4 actuator. There's only available with the EF. Right. Electronic failsafe. I mentioned this earlier. Uh, this is where we have a capacitor bank built into the actuator. So rather than uh, a mechanical spring, upon a power failure, the capacitors drive the actuator and get into it. Uh, but as far as the uh, different columns, the part number, similar thing. So a GK, you see here. 360 inch pounds. The AHK, we saw an H in that slide that showed the different uh, German words, and H just means it's, a, it's got a linear stroke to it. So the H series actuators are nice for replacing old pneumatics. And then this NK series, the 54 inch pounds, that's a quick running actuator. Um, I believe it's a Four second one time drive? Four, four seconds. seconds. Yeah. And four second fail. Right. So the second column there, if you have a Q, that's going to be the quickest running. And so NKQ is uh, typically what you'll see there. Again, we have basic and customized the B and the X. The power supply again. With these electronic fail safe, we only have 24 volt capabilities. And then again, we have the uh, we do have a series of fire and smoke vapor actuators, and just so you know, uh, a lot of people get confused um, thinking that, oh, I have to replace light for light if I have a fire smoke vapor that has a failed actuator. That's not really true. 
what you have to do is